Jensen um, has been quite involved over the social media, Instagram, Twitter, wishing us good luck. Yeah, knowing that 2009 F1 world champ is watching you drive his car is, uh, well, I don't even want to think about it to be honest, so uh, it, can't, it could be quite off-putting. Good morning. I've got my sunnies on today, even though the sun's just gone away. But anyway, I've just arrived at Alton again for a race day. A lot of prep to do in various areas. Testing wise, we've had kind of no testing in real life. So I've been doing a set of Corsa on the sim. Having worked with the GT Academy from day one, drivers like Jan Mardenborough, we did a lot more racing at a lower level to start with. but. None of them have taken a step quite as big as this um, as their very first venture into the real driving side. It is very much turn up and adapt to the situations that come at you, but um, I've done all I can, so and it's gone well so far. Having Alton Park as the first track for the race is uh, challenging, I think to say the least. It's a mini version of the Nordschleife. It's very little runoff. If you make a mistake, it will bite. Me and Michael, uh, the first race working together, his first year in GT3, he's done some GT4, so he has a good idea of how to set up a car really well. The learning curve's been really, really steep so far for both of us, but uh, it's been good. We're, we're learning all the time, making improvements. Every time we get in the car, we're improving, um, so I'm not really that nervous. Uh, I feel really surprisingly good with the car, nice balance, I feel comfortable. We've been working really well together so far. We like the same things about the car, we're saying the same things about the setup. So far, so good. Nick, it's alright, you can be in it now. No, it's yeah, nice close. Hello. But um, there it is. I feel like I did everything I could in quality for the first time in the car. That was awesome. Perfect as well. Again, built up every lap. Starting fourth towards the front of the GT3 field and then the GT4s will come into play later in the race. He's starting in the first race, so he hasn't got the luxury of getting in the car after a stint from Michael. So he's you know, straight in at the action. Luckily, he's quite near the front. His job will be to stay out of trouble and try and maintain position. If there's a mess up in front of you, you can have to take advantage of it. If, if everyone gets away cleanly, just follow them and slot in and then go down on the way, you know, and the race will unfold. It'll be a train, really, wouldn't it? It'll be a train until someone makes a mistake. You know, if he can start fourth and finish fourth, you know, that'd be a, a really, really good result for them. About to jump in the car. I'm feeling excited and uh, hot because it's very hot. So let's go. There's stuff around the driving that I need to focus on, like the pit stops, they're really important here. Uh, avoiding the GT4s. Safety car periods, yellow flag signals, all of that stuff counts. And when you're, when you're obviously fighting for points at every round, it's vital that we get every small detail right. I need to be that all-rounder today, really. Red, 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 red. It's been a long wait, but the 2020 Intelligent Money British GT Championship is go! The lights go out, the front towards Old Hall Corner begins. They make their way down the hill then into Cascade. Still, it is Angus Bender and James Ford in third and fourth. On the grid, it was a nerve-wracking experience, obviously, but the sim racing, I found that the main thing it's helped with is the mentality I have, so just focus on what's important. It's like we're focusing on the nerves because it doesn't really help anyone. Yeah, really solid third lap from James, maintained position in fourth. Good fight developing here, the third position. Angus Fender in the second of the two blue and black, two C's motorsport McLarens, has James Baldwin, the Gen C T Rocket RJM uh, example, right on his case. I think I had the pace to match, or if not, be quicker than the leader in me, but there was a car in front, hard to overtake at Old Park, so there was no point risking it. You know, when the leader's only two seconds up the road, you may as well just stay there. It's not an endurance race, but it sort of is, so the mentality changes. James Baldwin, the world's fastest gamer, is right on Fender's Fender, so it'd be good to see where it goes. Now we just need him to settle down into a rhythm and cut through the traffic in GT4. See in the mid-pack, near Fluid getting overtaken by the GT3 cars, and that was a nice overtake for them, because it's all in a straight line, and that's as good as it gets. <laughs> The two C's McLaren boxed in my box before I boxed in it. So that was a bit of a 
um, panic moment. When we handed over, we were in a really strong position. A faultless, really, from him in that, that opening stint. It was really, really impressive. Good first stint, that Baldwin. I think he's, he started fourth and stayed there, but no mistakes, and he kept the pressure on the two C's car in front throughout. He hasn't put a foot wrong, so I think he will be very happy. How was it then? How did you find the start? Uh, surprisingly calm. Yeah? Yeah. Well, the good thing is we jumped to space in the pit stops. That's it. Oh, we okay. did. I was clearly quicker than the guy in front and probably the two in front of him, so I just wanted to learn how the tyres reacted really. I'm actually shaking a bit, so it's probably not, the sport is not going in very well, but. Good. Michael O'Brien is into second place now, then, in the RJN uh, McLaren, so change the second there, Ollie Wilkinson falling backwards. Yeah, we've got 20 minutes left, so uh, we can potentially win on our debut. And there's a yellow flag out there. It's safety a safety car. car. So unfortunately, one of the GT4s has gone off and meant that there's a safety car. So the uh, one and a half second gap that Michael had has now disappeared down to a couple of tenths. There are winners and losers any time the safety car comes out. The big loser, really, Michael O'Brien, is going to uh, have some defensive work to do as and when the race gets back underway. Green flag, the race will resume and they'll have time, maybe, for two more laps. Yes, they should have two more laps to go. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Michael O'Brien has already built up a nice little cushion. That's probably about a second or so between himself and Wilkinson. It is the time for Jensen Team Rocket RJN to start celebrating. Across the line they go and Michael O'Brien brings it home. James Baldwin wins in his first ever race in the championship. Once I knew on those final two laps I'd got the gap back up after the safety car, it was uh, yeah, pretty special feeling crossing the line knowing that we'd won the first race. <laughs> Overall the weekend's been fantastic. We're leaders leaving the round going into round two. Winners, chicken dinners on the debut. Yeah, I can't believe it. We had high expectations. But I don't think anyone could have quite appreciated what he did actually achieve. It came away with a win, which was kind of unbelievable and not, not really expected at all coming into the weekend. It's been, yeah, a pleasure working with the team, with Michael. You're working towards something with a group of people. It's quite like, immensely satisfying that we've improved the car over two days and we've got results from it. And if we do that every single race of every round, there's no reason why we can't win the championship.